In 1983, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, civil rights leader and former protege of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., announced his candidacy for President of the United States. Jackson galvanized black people around the country to engage in a campaign for an office that most of us had thought a black person could never win. A black man or a black woman occupying the White House? That was the race's impossible dream. Jesse Jackson wasn't the first African American to run for president. That would be Shirley Chisholm. But Jesse Jackson's run was incredibly exciting. It wasn't just we might get a black president. We might get a black president with a narrative and an agenda that actually represents what democracy could really look like in this country. Young people across the country leapt at the chance to work on Jesse Jackson's presidential campaign, reaching out to voters far beyond the black community. He brought the white feminists, the white farmers, the first GLBT leaders within the Democratic Party. He said, come and take a seat at this table. I have enough room for everybody. Surprisingly, Jackson struggled to receive endorsements from many high-profile black politicians. Most of the black leadership was against him running. They had their own arrangements with the Democratic Party and establishment. They didn't think it could work, but he ran, and he did very well, better than they all thought. 3.5 million people cast their votes for Jesse Jackson. Some estimated that as many as 20% of the African Americans who voted for him had never voted before. Though he fell short of winning the Democratic nomination, Jesse Jackson's 1984 presidential bid changed the political landscape forever. Long before there was a Barack Obama, there was a Reverend Jesse Jackson, and he was lifting up little kids all across America, believing that they too one day can become president of the United States. He taught us that our voices matter, and we should leverage the power of our vote.